it's Shoba from Just Go Places. Let's talk about how great Soufrière in St. Lucia is today. It's a small town in the south of the island and included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site that is the Pitons listing. For a little town, there's a surprising number of things to do in Soufrière, especially if you like being outdoors and um, being with nature. So. Let's chat about all there is going on in Soufrière St. Lucia. So Soufrière, the town in, in southern St. Lucia, is actually located in a volcano caldera. Once you drive on the ridge road and can see Soufrière town itself, you are actually in the volcano caldera. The Piton Mountains that you see looming up over the town, actually the edges of the volcano. Soufrière used to be the capital of St. Lucia when the French controlled the island. There's lots of brightly colored colonial houses uh, set around a pretty little harbor with boats bobbing in the water. And uh, one of the prominent sites in town is the Catholic Church of the Assumption with its blue detailing that the um, uh, came from the French times. The capital moved from Soufrière to Castries in the 19th century when the British took over St. Lucia. Soufrière itself is very laid back and relatively underdeveloped. All the money in the luxury resorts surrounding the town seems to stay in the luxury resorts and not really filter into the town. There are lots of boat tours to Soufrière from the northern, more touristy part of St. Lucia because the south is it's a popular destination because you have these amazing beaches and of course you have the two pitons and you can't come to St. Lucia without seeing the pitons. And it's a very nice boat trip as well. The whole area is very different from the more urbanized north of the island. It's faster to come to Soufrière by boat in, in the Caribbean Sea than to uh, wind your way on land. We found out the, the hard way because we stayed about 15 miles away and we thought it was pretty close to Sofia, but on windy mountain roads, that's actually a longish trip. It took us about an hour. We were told that the Harbor Club Hotel in Rodney Bay has one of those super fast speed boats that can make the trip in an hour and a half all the way from the north in Rodney Bay. So here are 10 cool things to do in Sofia. First of all, you have to visit the volcano. St. Lucia's Soufrière Volcano is known as the world's only drive-in volcano because you really are driving in a seven mile wide caldera. Don't worry, the whole area is monitored by the University of the West Indies Seismic Volcanic Center in a nearby island. The name Soufrière itself is French for sulfur in the air and that's how you know that the volcano is dormant. The sulfuric smell is noxious but you know offensive as it is it's actually a good indication that the volcano is still happily dormant and you are well out of harm's way. You need to smell a sulfur in the air to know that the volcano means you no harm. For example, we were told in 1902, 13,000 people nearby Martinique died in a matter of a couple of minutes because they couldn't smell the sulfur air and the volcano was spewing out all these um, smellless but poisonous gases and by the time they realized that it, it, the damage had been done. On the volcano tour a guide shows you where the French um, had their thermal baths near the craters so, sort of like the Romans would have uh, hot baths. I mean it's no longer used but it's kind of cool to see and it's right near a very pretty waterfall. The guide also takes you to where the edge of the volcano bubbles away. It looks like something you'd see on the moon, like a totally foreign landscape. There are 18 lava domes and seven craters that are the most active. The actual live chamber of the volcano is about a mile and a half below the ground. In times past, you could actually go near the craters and walk in that lunar landscape. But the guide will show you one called Gabriel's Crater that's uh, and that's where a tour guide in 1984 actually fell into the crater and badly burned himself. He's alive now, but oh my goodness, that must have hurt. 
After visiting the crater, you should take a mud bath in, um, in the nearby sulfur baths. You can get a ticket that combines both the volcano experience and the mud bath experience. And the mud comes from the volcanic soil and you're, it's supposed to have all these healing properties and, and be really good for your skin. After being covered in mud from head to toe, you get to hang out in the warm sulfuric waters to soak in the healing properties of the volcano. There are several pools that feed into each other, so um, you know it's a very relaxing experience. Definitely don't take a swimsuit that you care about because that volcanic black mud takes time to get out of clothing. Uh, you know, it could potentially ruin an expensive suit. The mud is supposed to be healing, but I have super sensitive skin and it was not so healing for me. I broke out in a rash for a few days afterwards, but that's not the case for most people. The lovely spa lady at East Winds Resort made me a um, aloe vera thing from fresh aloe vera to put on my skin and that calmed it down a lot. But my friend who went had no issues at all. Another one of the fabulous things to do is visit the beaches. Pretty little Sofia Town Beach is pretty and nice, but the really nice beaches have been co-opted by the luxury hotels. The beaches of Anse Chastanay, Anse Monin, and Sugar Beach are the most popular and some of the best beaches on St. Lucia. In many resorts, you can rent the beach facilities for a day pass. It depends on who's in charge and how they feel about you. We met someone who had no problem getting into all these luxury resorts and, you know, with his day pass. He got into Jade Mountain Beach, for example, with no hassle, just walked in and paid for it and was fine. For us, uh, the guards refused to let us use their bath bathrooms and changing facilities because that was apparently for guests only, even though we had paid the exorbitant day pass rates. Sugar Beach was another. We had lovely service at the hotel itself, but they made us park at the top of the mountain near the tennis courts, and that is a long hike from the resort and the beach, which is at the bottom of the mountain. And you had to hike down and I was hot and huffy and sweaty and it was terrible. And by the time I made it down to the beach, I was a mess. And I refused to walk back up that mountain when I had to leave and so completely pitched a fit. And they had to take us in the courtesy shuttle bus that they reserve for usually their um, guests and for their staff um, to get us back to our car. But our friend, he went a couple of days after us and he had no problem whatsoever. When he went a couple of days later, he got to park down by the hotel and saunter onto the beach club. He, he loved it so much, he went back for a couple of days. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it was just us? I got the feeling that these resorts really don't want to let non-guests onto their properties, but all beaches in St. Lucia are um, public up to the certain tideline and so they are grudgingly letting people onto their beaches that aren't their guests. But I feel, however, if you charge people to enter your resort, then you don't treat them like lepers. It's not like, you know, the day passes that we paid for were particularly cheap. So another must do thing in, in Soufrier is to check out the Pitons, get up close and personal. The Pitons are the two towering mountains, uh, peaks, that rise from the Sofer volcano. They are covered in rainforest and the Pitons are protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, there are two Pitons and there's actually three miles between them, but you wouldn't know it just by looking at them. The Gros Piton is 2,700 feet high and Petit Piton is about 2,400 feet high. Underneath the Pitons, there are coral reefs that are part of a protected marine area. They're great for snorkeling and diving enthusiasts. The Pitons are the iconic landmarks in St. Lucia. Even the local beer is named Piton because when you think Piton, you think St. Lucia. One, a cool thing to do is to take a hike. I mean, hiking up the Pitons is a popular activity. The hike up Gros Piton takes about four hours and is moderately hard. You can wear sneakers and you know, you can get a guide to take you up there. You get amazing views of St. Lucia and the nearby islands of Martinique and St. Vincent. Although Petit Piton is a smaller peak, it is actually a harder climb and is considered an advanced hike. Uh, most people do the Gros Piton hike because it's easier. If you feel like hiking but um, are not ready to take on the Pitons, you could do the super easy option 
um, which is what we did. We did the Pet Paul nature trail hike. So we got great views with a lot less effort and we got to see both pitons because if you go up a piton, you only see the other piton and the rest of the island. Whereas if you do the Tet Paul hike, you see um, both pitons. I mean, there is a steep bit for part of it. I mean, you know, anything called stairway to heaven is, is not going to be flat, is it? But then it evens out. There's a farm at the top and we were told that the farmer has to climb up and down those steps every single time he needs anything for his farm from the village. The farm had a little black cat who followed me around and probably worried about my health and, you know, I don't know, lack of, complete lack of fitness. Because <laughs> uh, it was hot and I was huffing. The views at the top were totally worth it though. They were amazing. And unlike climbing the pitons, you know, you can see both of them from where you are, your viewpoint. On a completely random note, we found there's a little feud happening between neighbors on the Tetpal Nature Trail uh, because we got lost getting off the mountain in our car and we drove into another, this time empty, parking lot and it said Tetpal Nature Trail and we were like, okay. This is not an alternate dimension. It's the same place, but different. We had to get to the bottom of it. And also, um, we needed directions to get off the mountain. So, so we talked to the guide who um, told us what was going on. He said he had been the original Tet Paul Nature Trail and his neighbor just right below him on the mountain had uh, opened up his own Tet Paul Nature Trail and stolen a lot of his business because, um, you know, you always go to the Tet Paul Nature Trail, that's the first one you see. And so obviously most of the tourists were going to the first Tet Paul Nature Trail they found and, um, and then, you know, his, his, he wasn't getting any of the business anymore. We were impressed with how sneaky but effective the capitalism was. And just so you know, there are two options for Tet Paul Nature hikes. Uh, there is no reason that both these farmers can't have a hiking trail and you know, we tourists, we can spread the money around. Another cool thing to do in Safir is take a boat trip. If you are not coming to Safir Bay by boat, take a boat ride to see the town from the sea. You can take a trip via boat taxi in the harbor to one of the other beaches like Anne's Cassinet or Sugar Beach. Arriving by boat at one of these beaches is, is very pretty and the, the choice of which beach to pick is between a natural black sand volcanic beach at Anne's Cassinet or the soft white sand imported from Guyana at Sugar Beach that covers the vo natural volcanic black sand. Really, you can't lose with either. They're both beautiful beaches. And then you arrange with the taxi, uh, water taxi person when you're going to be picked up so that you can either spend just a few hours or all day at the beach you choose. On the return to Sufrir, you get to see uh, the pitons and the town itself from a completely different point of view, which is from the sea. And it looks, it looks so different. You realize how little the, um, the town is and how hulking that mountain is. One of the things you should definitely do is go snorkeling or or maybe even diving. The waters around Sufrira are marvelously clear and a lot of fun. Uh, there are there's a marine reserve that has amazing snorkeling opportunities um, right near the Pitons and there are also other um, snorkeling opportunities. Anne's Chassinet has great because it has a roped off snorkeling area right near the beach which is really good for beginning snorkelers uh, and I, I spent a lot of time there. Uh, because of the area there are a lot of waterfalls in the area when you get the mountainous rainforest um, nature of the area. So tour guides seem to take you to Tarai Falls because it's the easiest to park at. It's, it's right on the side of the road. And the Tarai waterfall is a 50-foot waterfall with a plunge pool at the bottom. The pool is small though and there are lots of people taking photos. The tour guides do an amazing job of making it seem like you are in the middle of nowhere and having the time of your life, so they know what they're doing. You also have Diamond Falls and the Botanical Gardens, but you can't get into the water there. It's sparkly though because of the minerals on the cliff and uh, it's kind of super cool to see. If you want the full hidden away in a tropical jungle waterfall experience for real, you should try the Pitons waterfall. 
Uh, it's on the way to the Sugar Beach Resort, and it's a short hike from the car park where you pay a, a small entrance fee. You'll see bits and pieces of the Pitan waterfall as it's making its way through the rainforest as you walk towards the main waterfall. At the end, the force of the water as it comes off the rock is intense, and you know, it's an Instagrammer's dream. If you can look gorgeous and have the spray hit you right, it would be an amazing shot. I, I just look more like a drowned rat. Um, so yeah, yay me. Uh, after the rock, it falls into a pool and there's a whole series of pools here too with seating areas. And when we were there, we met a handful of locals, but nothing like the crowds at the Tarai Waterfall where you get the tour bus drop-offs. Uh, this seemed mostly locals, whereas Tarai was all tourists. Then the Diamond Falls Botanical Gardens um, is also very cool. That's where you'll find the Diamond Falls Waterfall as well. It is a private garden that is now open to the public and it shows you all about the diversity of the plant life on the island. I had no idea that half my plants uh, at my house, which, you know, are the current trendy ones because I follow trends, I like the monstera plant or the snake plant or tropical in origin. There are tropical bats as wet diamond falls as well, dating back to 1784, these heated bats. It's said that um, the Empress Josephine, the first wife of Napoleon Bonaparte, used these bats when she was a little girl growing up on St. Lucia. Her family had a plantation nearby. Another cool random thing to do is to check out the pre-Columbian art. Uh, near Soufriere. There isn't much left of the island from before the Western European powers started their colonization. One of the cool things though is that they have found petroglyphs on the Stonefields Villas Resort. The petroglyphs are etched onto giant boulders and uh, covered in moss and, and it's, it's very kind of it's very cool. You take a really peaceful, serene trail to the petroglyphs. It's super green and quiet and lush and you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, even though it is on a hotel resort. You'll soon see the rock carvings that face onto Petit Paton. This is supposed to have been a birthing site for the Carib Indians, who were originally the St. Lucian's uh, natives and the area was rich in energy that helped them with fertility. To be fair, it was incredibly peaceful, but I was then again I was thinking there was no Carib Indian woman uh, going into labor near us either, so may not have been that peaceful at that point. So I hope you enjoyed looking at Soufrier in St. Lucia and all the things that you can do there. There's plenty to do in this town and it's totally worth seeing. It's a beautiful part of St. Lucia that is very different from the more urbanized. Um, part of the northern part. I'm going to do a separate video on Sufria restaurants and where to stay, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, and that, you know, it, there are lots of luxury resorts, but there are also some affordable, way, affordable ways of staying in Sufria. If you liked what you saw in this video, remember to click like. And if you want more travel or travel adjacent content, remember to subscribe. And thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.